Good morning. Hello, welcome to another video. Wendy's here to give us a hand this time. It's first thing Sunday morning. Phil is on the way. Um, oh, okay, you stand there. Phil, the mobile sandblaster, is on the way down. I've now got the job of trying to get the two wheelie machines by the door outside so we can do the blasting outside and not make an absolute mess in here. Um, we're gonna hopefully paint the Jeff's Ranella, rebuild it and get it completely finished. It's gonna be good, isn't it? No, maybe not. pick the worst day of the year to do this but both machines are outside on blocks ready for Phil he's just turned up in his awesome truck I feel sorry for Phil actually he's gonna be suited up and full visor full overalls it's so hot out there but um, I'm gonna try and catch him before he starts and we did give a little walk around of his truck because it's a brilliant thing the setup he's got is absolutely awesome if you remember the yellow Vespa Phil actually came down and blasted that for me all the inside underneath so this is Phil's awesome truck and then he's got this trailer on the back good well, i suppose the business end is, is more in here can you give us a walk around to see what, what we got so what we got is we've got a two liter 16 valve turbocharged diesel engine which provides 105 cfu constantly which is the minimum i need to run the 60 liter pot in the back of this machine Underneath is a 250 litre water tank. So if you're working on boats of fiberglasses or working on a building as I've done in London, you can do everything wet. So what, so, you're blasting, so like water cooled? Yeah, or? no, it, it basically just a uh, reduction of dust. Like a, oh, so it's not like a big pressure washer? No, no, no it, just, 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 just keeps dust, no dust. Right. So that's the business so engine. giant engine, that's basically the, what, the compress, engine. make the compressor. That's it, it's yep. just a constant volume of air. Yeah. And then uh, all around the back here is where the sort of, jiggery pokery stuff happens so on the front of the compressor there's one of these so these basically remove all the moisture and all the oil from the air okay so you get no moisture in the air i don't get any moisture in my breathing i don't get any oil in it and uh, a speck of moisture in there it'll block it and you'll be forever cleaning it the media will kind of like just, clog just up and yeah just go wet right it's got to be bone dry otherwise it won't work and so the air the air that that compressor's pumping out yes. you're actually breathing as well yes it's going through your mask yes that's interesting wow so it, it condensates there condensates there it goes through these three here that's for me to breathe so that that's my so filter goes, there to it goes breathe. through yeah, yeah condensates there goes through three filters that's it and up through and one more one more for me to breathe yeah so I, I get pure oxygen, which is lovely. Nice. Otherwise, you, you can't do this. You know, <laughs> I, uh, and then this is the business end. It's a, it's a Gritco, Gritco micro strip, and that's a 60 litre pot. So that's where you put the, I keep saying sandblasting, but I don't know if it's so even the, sand. It goes in here. So we're, we're using, at the moment, Tom, we're going to be using a, a medium defined glass. 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 Ooh. Yeah, crushed glass. Right, okay. Yeah. And that's literally exa exactly crushed that. Glass. Crushed yeah, bits yeah, of yeah. glass. Less than 1% silicate, so it's safe to use in the environment. It won't cause any damage to you or me or flora and fauna. That's yeah. All, it's all safe to use. Good. Um, so everything goes in here. So what happens is it goes into this part of the top and it's all sieved because there are bits and pieces where there could be. Hang on, put there a bit of a shape. Yeah, that's it, perfect. Um, it, there could be glass in there chunks of glass so chunks of glass will block it so it goes through there first then goes so down it sieves the it and then it goes down in there it goes down into the machine so you can see where it goes down into so it goes down into there and yeah. what, what there is is there's a conical cone and when you pull, pull that up it comes up and produces a seal i see so it sucks so it down yeah, it, 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 it does then it turns it into a sort of a, a vacuum and it comes all the way down comes down through here and then mix into the hose. So these various hoses here, these are all to do with the triggering of the media. This one here is to do the adding of the water, which adds to the nozzle at the end, which you'll see in a bit. Yeah. And these here control whether you have a media coming through 
or whether you turn the media off so you can just blow air through the nozzle. Just clean it off, dust it Absolutely. off. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. You've got your Thompson valve here, which controls the distribution of the, of the feed rates. So you've got an on and off here. So it's like a carburetor almost. You're adjusting yeah, the mixture between absolutely. the air and the grit. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you've, you've got an on off valve here, which is obviously very, very important. You've got a bypass here <coughs> to clear any block backlogs you may have. Oh, so you can pull that and then it shoots it back. Yeah, absolutely. If it, in case it does get blocked, it yeah. pressures it back. Yeah. Now this T key here is very, very important. This controls your tank pressure. So now I can start at just over a bar or I can go to eight bar. In, so that, that tank will be pressurised oh, up God, to yeah. eight bar, oh, yeah. Absolutely. So it's not just a no, no. dustbin of no, grit. No no. no, 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 it can be up to eight bar. Eight bar. So I can either tickle something or I can go in and go, no, no, you, yeah. you, are, you are coming off today and this is what's happening. You get some, a stubborn customer. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So there's about 120 odd PSI I wow. can blow out of that if I need to. <laughs> That would do some damage. A lot of damage. Yeah. Um, I've caught my knee at six and a half bar and went, oh, that's very uncomfortable. I don't want to do that. You again. caught yourself. Yeah. 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 Um, and then this wheel over here controls what they call a differential pressure. What that basically means is that's your feed rate. So you can either do a little bit of media or you can do a lot of media. Okay. So you, you can mix and match your pressures and your differential rate or your pressures and your, and your, your feed rate according Spending. to what you're working on. I'm assuming it's not as simple as more media the better. No. No, it's no. got to be, it's a balance. Yeah, it is a balance. So uh, for something like um, brasses and bronzes, you can only use soda. Right. But you need a higher differential rate because soda will not naturally fall. So you've got to force soda through. With the glasses and the rest of the fines I use, that will naturally just trickle down. Yeah. So you don't need a high, you don't need it to, otherwise it's just sure. a plume of dust and just very little work. Wasting more than... Absolutely. So the, my little baby sort of a Geisen kind of cabinet that I've got yep. at the repair shop. Yeah. I use iron oxide in mm -hmm. that. Do you ever use that? I can do. Is that, you could do? But I don't need to. Because the glasses. Yeah, exactly, the glasses. Unless, of course, I'm working on um, catering equipment. So bread, bread trays that need to come and do cleaning. Sure. So you'd use, uh, I can't remember what it's called now. There is uh, an aluminium oxide thing that you can use. An yeah, aluminium bead. You can recycle that. That's the only one you can recycle right. over and over again but it won't damage the aluminium, won't take any metal off, it will just clean it perfectly and it will give it a brushed satin look. Nice. So they come back and look as if they're brand spanking new. Yeah. Um, with the glasses and the rest of fines, you'll actually take metal off. So for catering equipment in the kitchen, you use soda, because soda will not take any metal off in any way, shape or form, will not touch rust. Yeah. It is safe to water down because you're using bicarbonate soda, which is actually a food. I see, yeah, of course. Foods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can use that to use on catering equipment in situ. It's, it's quite spectacular. Someone's got a big bag of flour and just waves it around <laughs> everywhere. Um, but because you can wash it away and water it down, it's safe to use in a catering, so catering, a catering environment. Catering van, a kitchen. Yeah. I mean, that, they've got a lot of cleaning ahead. God, this is a lot more complicated than I thought. Yeah. There's a lot to it. There is a lot to it. Yeah. And it all depends on whether you're doing aluminiums or bronzes or brasses, or if you're doing a softwood, a medium wood, a hardwood, whether you're doing steels. Uh, of course, you can do wood as well. Like beams wood, in people's houses, done, all sorts. 15th, 16th, 17th and 18th century timbers within properties itself. In the like in someone's kitchen, in, yeah. yeah, yeah, wow. And for that, I've got a, a large extractor which actually extracts the dust from the air and puts it into a dirty, great big log. I see. Stock. Yeah, and it's the only way I can work in a, in a property. Because this is going to make. Well, we're about to. We'll see later, but this is about to make some mess, isn't it? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I got asked by a lady one time, "Will this make a mess?" And I stood there with a big cheeky smile on my face. But oh, absolutely. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. feeds through here, yeah. round here, round here, through yeah. all this spaghetti and out the nozzle. The yes. So this is a tungsten carbide tip. Oh, hang on, where are you? There we go. It's just there. Uh, and then you've got your trigger here, which is a safety. You've got to say, which you've yeah. got to press for safety and releases. That's a huge, God, the end of that. Yeah. That is, my goodness. Yeah. My little one at the repair shop, you couldn't even get a pencil in the end. No, this, 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 this but I, I, I can be very, very pre precise with this. It, yeah, even I, I can big. do a thin line or I can do a great big splurge. Can you? You can adjust? Yeah. I, I, ah. It all depends on your angles and how close and how far you are you are away from the from the project itself. Of course. Cool. So, so you've got variables on the machine, variables yep. on the compressor. Yep. And compressor then you've got variables down here. So you've got water variables here. So these are your water variables. And this is to bypass the media, to turn the media on and off, so you can either... So at the moment that's open, so I've got media. When you close it, 
I'll just get air. Just air, yeah. Just, just air, that's yeah. all you get. So you can actually blow a project off to see what you're doing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's amazing. The, obviously the, the clear one, as I said, is your water. Your water mix at the end here. So it makes a spray. Around the edge, it makes a yeah. little mist. Yeah. yeah. So, that's fascinating. So that's the business end of that. It's just that's fascinating, isn't it? I, you just don't appreciate. You just assume it's our oh, tank of sand, compressor, just smash it and blast into it. But there's so many different variables. He, he's got years and years of experience doing this on all sorts of mo the most fragile, delicate, expensive and rare cars, houses, boats, all sorts of different things. Don't worry, Ranala number one is in safe hands. Once he's finished the two Ranalas, I might get him to have a look at this and see what he thinks, but not today but maybe later, whilst he's here. It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? That is hot. I've completely destroyed my, I've completely destroyed my camera. And then literally the lens won't even close anymore. Look at all the grit, it's oh, absolutely gosh. covered. When you, stand in, when you stand in the wrong place, it's really. Yeah, it's quite dusty. Yeah, but look at my hair. <laughs> at least you've got hair. <laughs> Brilliant, what a difference. It looks brilliant, doesn't it? In, that didn't even take a huge amount of time, did it? Uh, Less than an hour. Just, just over the hour. It's just over. But I think that's, 90, 97% of the way. Yeah, man, yeah, it. yeah. That looks amazing. It looks so good now. That looks fantastic. Crikey. The whole thing just looks nice and clean. Nice. I know it's tough, horrible, hard work and dirty, but to stand back at the end of the day and see that. It's lovely. Must even, be nice. Even when it's, just, I mean, what's today? 30 degrees at the minute? Yeah. We're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> good, still smiling. Yeah, good. absolutely. Dressed in our very best black. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that really does pop out now, that's good. Lovely, that's, that's what it needed. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. It's still got some nice texture from it being cast and all the little little bits here and there. It's lovely, yeah. like all this nice rough texture, it's good. But the worst of the, o uh, the overcast is gone. Yeah. So. Great job, whoa, one down, one to go, sorry. Literally, literally number one. <laughs> this, yeah, exactly, number, literally number one. Be careful with this one. Phil's about to start on the second one. Oh, every time I turn my camera on now, the lens comes out, it goes I don't know if it's even focusing now. Oh no, what have I done? Come on. But uh, Phil's done such a good job. It's so nice to see that Ranala sitting outside, that bare cast iron just looking clean and beautiful. It's so cool. And I've got a beautiful warm day. So once he's finished that one, we'll have a big tidy up. Oh, here he goes. He's starting again. He's keen, he's keen. I'm gonna try it and get my paint ready and paint them as soon as possible. So there'll be no chance of anything going rusty. Get it primed, painted, and done. It's gonna be good.
They're both finished. Phil's packing up. He's on his way. It's over to me now to try and paint them. It's amazing how efficient. It's only taken you a few hours and we've swept up, cleared up. Yeah. You hardly know you're here. Yeah. Done. Uh, and a relatively low pressure to, re to remove the casting scale. And uh, what was it? What did you say? Three? Two, no, about two and a quarter, two and a half bar. Two and a half bar yeah. out of the potential eight yes. on offer. Yes. And that did, and that was more than enough. <laughs> yeah, it's done a good job. We'd have nothing left at eight bar, I think. We'd have holes in it, but... <laughs> well, there you go. Well, no, thank you very much. Been a pleasure. No, not at all. Anyone out there that needs anything blasted? Do you go, where do you go? You're in Kent or... Well, I'm, I'm based in uh, East Sussex. East Sussex, oh, yeah, okay. So, Sussex. south so coast. I can, I can go. Go anywhere. Oh, well, pretty much, yeah, within a sort of a 60, 65 mile range, yes. Yeah, perfect. So that's not too bad at all. Oh. It's actually a really similar colour to my van. Uh, I really like it because it's a top coat. So, this is a self priming top coat. It's an industrial uh, cellulose based paint that would have been used to paint machinery and big sort of industrial things, skips, stuff like that, like big hard wearing machines. I don't have to prime it and then put a top coat, it's all in one. Got a brushing additive in there, so it should let it sort of sit down nicely and we'll lose some of the brush marks. Yes, I am gonna brush paint it. I have got spraying facilities here, but I just wanna brush paint it. I just think it'd be nice. I feel, I feel like that's more in keeping with the 1930s origins of these machines just a nice i've got a lovely brush it's lovely paint that's brushable and i'm sure i'll get a nice finish if there's nice warm sun outside we should be good also over paintable uh, so it would be great as a primer for people i'm assuming most people that get these machines have a color scheme in their workshop and they tend to paint all the machinery a color jeff's is green as you've seen all of his machines are painted green so i would fully expect somebody like jeff to buy one of these machines get it in their workshop and then paint it green so i thought a nice neutral gray is smart and nice on its own if you want to leave it it's a top coat and it's perfectly durable and fine but also it's a nice neutral base if you did want to repaint it you can paint straight over this stuff right i'm going to put this into a cup take it out there that is a good tip actually that I've learned over the years. Don't paint straight from, don't try and take this two and a half litre pot out there to paint with. Decant it into a smaller cup. The amount of times I have knocked over the entire pot of paint or got something in it and contaminated it from brushing on something, dropping the brush and dipping it back in, then you've ruined the whole pot of paint. So decant it into a smaller cup, take that outside and leave the full pot of paint in the workshop. There's a top tip for the day. Just looks nice and clean and sharp it looks lovely sitting there that is the first coat done the paint went on so nicely you know it's hard to explain but when you paint things you just if the paint consistency is just right it's thinned down just the right amount the temperature is all good you know it's all everything just goes well a nice quality brush it was lovely the paint was actually supplied by krs near ashford in kent um, if you need anything they do automotive paint but they do all sorts of stuff i can't speak highly enough of the guys there they've been so helpful they really have gone above and beyond that's the first coat on i need to let that dry which it almost is now already then i'll put the second coat on which you don't need to see wheel it inside then we can paint the letters Probably looks no different at all to you, but I've got a new camera. Oh.
A week has actually gone by since Phil left with the sandblasting. I came back the next day, I brought it back inside, it's in the workshop, then it was time to think about the lettering. Now, I've come back today after a, nearly a week of the video being out and so many of you, literally hundreds of you have replied. So many people have said paint the lettering red. And I, was, I, had, I had my heart set on like an off-white, I was going to do it black. <coughs> Wendy! I was going to do the lettering maybe black or dark grey, or maybe cream, but so many of you said red, I was like, oh, I don't know. I hadn't even thought about doing it red. So I've come in this morning and gone through my pots of paint. There's a lovely deep red back here. This one, alpha red. I quite like the look of that, but you know what? This maroon was a very close second. Basically, there's too many different colors to choose from. I've been looking this morning, I've been looking at the reds, I was just like, oh, you know what, I could do it. And that maroon, that Morocco maroon, it's a lovely, re, sort of royal almost, purpley maroon. It's a lovely colour. I've actually painted a few things on the repair shop with a very similar colour to that. I've tinted it slightly. Um, and it's always gone down well. Big thank you to everybody so much for commenting. You really did open my eyes. I did not even think about doing it red or that maroon. But um, I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. I didn't do it red. I did it cream. That's it. Standing there by the shutters in the front of the workshop is the very first finished Ranala. Every single component on that is brand new. Now I've got the first one finished, it's not until today that I've actually been able to sort of prove every single component. It's all well and good having the pieces cast and having the frames cast, but until it's actually put together and put to use and actually tested, I don't know if it works or needs modification. So I've not actually committed to having bulk orders of anything cast or made or machined yet. So now I can go around all of the suppliers, Chris at East Coast Casting at the Foundry, the guys doing the machine work, everyone that's been involved to make each component. I can now try and get prices from them for multiples, like going forwards, if I were to say 10 sets or five sets of each part. Up until this point, I've been doing one-offs for the research and development of the whole project, just one at a time, changing things to do another one, and that's been horrendously expensive. I don't even want to think about how much that's cost with the research and development of each individual part, remaking it, like the top wheel. That's now that we had to make the first one, then we did another one. Now I know every single component works. I can actually get prices for multiples. Um, that should bring the price down. The whole point of this project was to try and reintroduce these machines, get them out there in people's sheds, in people's workshops. And the only way that's gonna happen is if people can afford them. I think this is almost the end. It's not the end because there's a lot more going on. We need to get this machine down to Jeff and I'll film that. And there is also some sort of secret Ranala stuff coming up, which might be happening in September. Um, I'm not gonna say any more than that at the moment because it's not confirmed, but watch this space. All of the parts are done. It's there, standing there. The plaque is the only thing that I haven't done yet. The, the original ones had the address of Ranala. Um, which is obviously no longer their address and I don't want to just replicate that with an old address that doesn't exist I don't really want to put my address um, I'm tempted to put the Ranala website um, Which I've got the website for but I haven't actually put anything up there yet, but I've got the sort of domain name um, But it feels a bit modern So I'm not sure exactly that's still up for debate at the moment But we're done. That's it. Thank you very much for following. I hope you've enjoyed it next week is gonna be another good one probably be down at the museum but um we'll see you next time thank you so much for watching take care